Um, I'm going to pass it over to Rome to see if um, there's any highlights from the Canvas forum that should be brought up. Yeah. So, hey, everyone. My internet is a little funky, so just imagine me smiling really big and talk with my hands sometimes. So you, you could just put that image in your mind. And you have me there, all right? What we want to do is really start to think about what we've been talking about on Canvas. We're thinking with community in session two. In session three, we're understanding batteries. And in this session, infrastructure and logistics, you'll be diving in a little bit deeper in how to build up your collective. In session five, you'll go into that a little bit more as well. So I want to know if anyone wants to share. These are two questions. You can choose any question you want to share with anyone, um, whichever one resonates with you the most. How do you determine what an emergency is in your community? Another one is what is essential for your community? This can go into what is, what is it for your community to survive um, different accesses or inaccesses to energy and power. This can go into, I know some folks, uh, I think this was Kelvin who mentioned three essential things for their community, which is communication, sustained life, and quality of life. So that may be something that you list as essential for your community. And communication or loss of communication may be something that you may say, that is what I qualify as an emergency. If you're someone who's thinking more about appliances, you may think, these are the first appliances that come to mind to be very essential for my community survival. These are things that we instantly need. So if anyone wants to share, drop in. How do you determine what is an emergency in your community? All right. Or you can even answer that and say, this is what an emergency looks like for us. What an emergency sounds like to me is when I don't have what I need to be prepared for the emergency. If a storm comes and I have everything I need and I know I'm going to be okay and I'm not fretting for anything, it's less of an emergency for me. It's when I'm caught off guard and I don't have the things I need and I'm, you know, freaking out, that's when it's more of an emergency. So preparation or not feeling prepared. Yes. Um, uh, as far as when an emergency might be happening, as in a power outage, I notice traffic lights are out in a given area. If I'm driving around, I see several blocks of no traffic lights working. I, I start to uh, think, okay, these people are without electricity. And then one can go to the grid provider. In our case in Ohio, it's American Electric Power. Go to their website and they'll have a map of the Columbus area and it'll show the communities or the parts of the city that are without power. Um, so that's when and where um, part of the question. So we're getting landscape, like what we witness. We're also taking inventory of preparation, whether or not I'm prepared, whether or not I feel prepared. To save some time, I'll read some from the chat if you all are comfortable. I think someone said is a significant portion of a population at risk where backup systems are needing to be activated to sustain the quality of life for at-risk people. So we're getting that quality of life as a kind of constant thing, right? Threats to health, life, and safety. An emergency is an event that diminishes my quality of life in order to grace my ability to sustain myself and loved ones, including pets or many folks. Community-wide threats, I'm hearing. My name is Ann Meredith. I work with Sheehar and Harris. I'm from New Orleans. I'm thinking about, too, y'all yeah, were talking about communication. And so thinking about how we're coming into hurricane. We're in hurricane season, but we're coming into the height of hurricane season. And so thinking about both communication and being able to name amongst ourselves in real time, because we have a mutual aid roundtable like a folks council of different mutual aid collectives all around town and we come together before during and after storm season to support each other and building at the speed of trust deepening relationships doing skill shares knowing who's got which resources at which hubs including solar generators who has which like doing a strength-based community needs 
mapping all of that goodness who is multilingual, which spaces are wheelchair accessible. So if you have a solar generator, that's fantastic, but is it upstairs? Does it have like a police station right across the street? Are there gender affirming restrooms? Do the like folk inside speak all of the different languages of within our community? Um, so how we can deepen those skill sets ahead of time. And then thinking about communication in real time, we've been like building mesh networks so that we can build our own internet communications when everything's down. Because last time cell phone towers fell into the water. So we, can't, we don't have access to internet. We don't have access to cell phone, but then also how to communicate amongst ourselves in real time, but also how to communicate with the outside because they send in police, they send in national guard with AKs, they send in ICE. Also how to communicate with folks from away, needs, boundaries, um, just all of that communication with needs before, during, after real time amongst ourselves. And also we have well-intentioned folks thinking they know what their, our needs are and sending us all kinds of goodness that can either cause harm or uh, just be another thing to have to deal with. So anyway, sending y'all love from Sweet Rascal Babes. Thank you for that. When we're thinking and when we're imagining like how we would like to respond to emergencies, um, I would invite people to, to try to start thinking about independent solutions. So solutions that aren't reliant on other things. There was a, a, a note going around in the, the chat regarding like refrigeration or oh, how can we refrigerate our medicine? You want something that's um, disconnected, something that's standalone, something that doesn't rely on something else. A refrigerator relies on uh, electricity. So if you can find a solution that's not a refrigerator that doesn't rely on something else, then that could be a possible solution. So that same theory can be applied to a lot of different things. And you'll see how that works when we start talking about logistics as well. Independent and also redundant. Yeah, redundant is, is definitely something that also helps. 